baby, one more sleep till football, but you don't have to sleep at all for us to talk about real football. Week one, tomorrow night's big game that could be the Super Bowl this year. We are getting into start sick questions, and we're diving deep on that game. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, September 7th, the Fantasy Footballers. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, I'm Andy Holloway. Welcome in. One I'd, day away, one sleep away. I'd like to go to sleep. <laughs> I'm so excited. Football tomorrow. We'll be doing the preview of that game right here on today's show. It's good good work, uh, NFL schedule people, at least for this. I, they, they screw a lot of things up throughout the year, but good work here. Yeah, we this have, is this is an incredible game. It's what the Super Bowl probably should have been last year, um, if not for overtime rule rules. <laughs> we're, I, I we're, mean, the, we're still on that. Well, I'm look. I hate the presumption that if the rule was different, they would have won. That's a <laughs> that's a terrible presumption. That is fair. That's absolutely fair. The Chiefs d deserved what they did, but the Bills did not deserve. I mean, they did everything they could. Didn't, didn't the Chiefs score in like 15 seconds? Yes. Okay. So that's on the that's the Bills. On the Bills. Deserve to that's lose. on the Bills. And we love the Bills, but yeah. if you let a team score to tie a championship game in 15 seconds, you deserve to lose. You guard Tyree Kill, Mike. You do it. Well, we'll maybe see. Maybe I could. <laughs> Probably not. Just as good as the Bills did. NFL news to talk about. Like I said, the Thursday night preview, some mailbag. We've got Super Bowl picks on today's show. We have Ride or Die, a brand new segment. Oh, baby. Uh, coming very soon here. Vroom, vroom. And then tomorrow's show, Never Not Working, is back. We've got all the matchup previews. Well, part one. And uh, we have starts of the week. The Boom Boom Kicker returns. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, oh, man. I can't wait. We've been working on it for... Who's we? Me, myself, and I. <laughs> it's the collective. I usually refer to myself uh, in the plural. I got it. Yeah, for sure. Your team of you. Uh, and then Friday, we got the rest of the matchups. We've got Fantasy Faceoff, Wheel of Shame. We'll talk about the first game in the season. I mean... Oh, crap. We <laughs> forgot. We have... Uh... The Wheel of Shame? The Wheel of Shame is happening tomorrow. Oh, for, yeah, based on, game. based on oh, the no. game. Oh, no. So, I'm not confident. <laughs> I'm I'm less confident. Come on, Isaiah McKenzie. So it, look, it's going to be a jam packed, <sighs> super fun week. I always, when I think of the matchup that we have tomorrow night, I my brain can't help but go to the fact that like one of those two teams starts the year on one. I mean, yep. like one of the best two teams in football is going to end up winless after week one and at the bottom of their division. That's fun. All right, couple of reminders here at the top. Today is the very final day of draft times for the Mega Bowl. Uh, the last one, I believe, is 10 Eastern tonight. So depending on when you're listening to this, you might not be able to jump in. But if you're hearing this right when it comes out, go to megalobowl.com. You can still get in in time to make it into one of these and leagues. I have not drafted yet. So if you get in, you... What's your, what's your handle in there? Jason FFL. So if you see Jason FFL, it is actually Jason. It is me. Uh, I thought you were going to say it's an easy win, but I, I hear well, what you're saying. Tomato, tomato. Uh, Megalabold.com <laughs> for that. My bold predictions article should be up later today. Kyle? It will be up. Once you fix some capitalization issues that you've got in there. Yeah, just for the yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> I like my, you fix my article. Well, I mean, he's the editor. <laughs> he's the editor-in-chief. <laughs> I just scribble it on a piece of paper. He transcribes. Ah, I do all my work use, on uh, paper. Don't use Dragon. What is that? Talk to yeah, that, was, that was the old, yeah, like the that's... OG, back when they were unleashing that there upon was, the world. There was a time in which I thought Talk to Speech was revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, 
I legit it thought it seemed awesome. I I thought like in the software, if you had to buy it back then, it was like hundreds of dollars. Yep. So I never had it, and I thought, wow, like computers are going to revolutionize the world with talk to speech. People are going to be writing novels this way. I don't think that happens. No, and now there you see like the, the capitalization issues. You see the people out in the wild doing the text to speech. You're like, what an idiot! Shake my head. I get only text to speech text from my contractor that's working on a, our house uh -huh. and it's everyone is a new surprise <laughs> it's like a brand new story there's five words that are completely i know he i know what he's doing but man it's a good time all right here we go ride or die presented by chevrolet For those listening at home, we had a very nice graphic there for the brand new Ride or Die segment where Jason cruises off into the sunset with both Brees Hall and Michael Pittman. Whew, that's right. That's fine. Uh, where would one see that graphic at? Andy? That would be the YouTube that is nearing 300,000 subscribers. Go subscribe! We are so close. We need 300K before tomorrow. We are so close, Mike can taste it. <clears throat> YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Thank you. All right. Week one, ride or die predictions on today's show. Brooks, why don't you read us our first prediction and we will decide whether we agree. All right. The first one for week one is DK Metcalf versus the Broncos. 55 or more receiving yards. 55! All right, 55-plus receiving yards. He averaged 56.9 yards per game last year. DK Metcalf Oof. taking on Denver. What do you think? Ride or die? Um, this is a really, really good line. I think it's – he's going to be involved. He is yeah. the primary pass catcher in this offense this season, but obviously you've got a Geno Smith problem. That being said, <clears throat> that line, I think he hits it. I think he comes out week one as an – incredibly important part of this offense and when I looked back to last year the starts with Geno Smith I know a lot of those were kind of touchdown dependent but he had 58 yards 96 yards he had games where he was involved and I think 55 they need him to get there and I think week one he does so I'm riding let's ride 55 yards uh yeah man that's that is such a good line uh, but I will ride. I will ride with DK Metcalf getting 55 yards in week one. That is going to be unanimous. All right. I'm actually surprised. That Denver-Seattle game line, um, I've seen people run you know, simulations on that game with the stat lines, and like, I, it just, I think it's going to be closer than people think. You spent the whole offseason saying negative things about Seattle, the whole offseason saying positive things about Denver. I just think that the game ends up closer. I think Metcalf is important. Like, like Seattle only loses by, like, Three touchdowns? Like that three, close? Po three points. Oh, oh, man. Whoa. Yeah. I, th I think it'll be a very close game. I think it will be a bloodbath. Yeah. I, I, that game's in Seattle, right? That is correct. Yeah. yeah. No, that game's going to be close. Uh, You heard it here now. Maybe I'll have to bring my – Um, maybe when we do predictions, my almost upset of the week might be that game. Mm, uh, starting off with an L. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, it's week one. We want to do that? <clears throat> I mean, you can say anything you want on a Wednesday <laughs> afternoon. I mean – you you can literally. I know, like you're saying, the, like the Seahawks are barely going to lose to the Broncos. I mean, isn't that what's the game line? Four points, six and a half. All right, well, <laughs> Baker Mayfield versus <laughs> Cleveland. Our second prediction, Brooks. What do you have? Will he throw two or more passing touchdowns or not? Oh man, Baker Mayfield against Cleveland. Now they're favored in this game at home. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Revenge game though. Yeah, two or more. I'm going to ride. I'm going to ride with Baker Mayfield against Cleveland. I don't think their defense is going to travel well in this one. And so I will ride with Baker. I I mean, this is obviously a very achievable line. Right now I've got him projected for like 1.5 uh, passing touchdowns, which obviously means it's either one or two, and uh, two hits the line. But I find more success – going away from relying on Baker Mayfield. And, you know, Christian McCaffrey is there. Obviously, he could receive a touchdown, but I think Christian McCaffrey can rush touchdowns in just as easy. I'm going to I'm – I'm, uh, You're going to die. I'm going to die. I'm not going to I'm not gonna ride with Baker on oh, this Oh, we riding. We riding the revenge narrative, and it's because Christian McCaffrey 
is such like has such a good chance to actually just catch a touchdown. I think that boosts Baker's odds here. They, you're right. I mean, I'm. I mean, I know that the Panthers aren't gonna. They don't care about the revenge for Baker, but I think they they do care. As in, like this is our quarterback. This is our guy. Let's go destroy the team that just did him dirty. All right. Our final one has to do with Clyde edwards alaire By the oh, way, man. Baker did hit that mark in uh, 30 of 59 starts. So it's it's right yeah, there. Because he's good. Well, that's about half. So, I, was, I mean, I'm just saying. It's 50%. Um, Brooks, what's our final line? What's uh, our final prediction? All right. CEH going up against your Cardinals. Will he have at least 17 opportunities? And we cl we classify opportunities as rushes plus targets. Yeah. So, wait. Okay. Targets? Yeah. yeah. A target is an opportunity. Yep. It's not touches. Yeah, I mean, 17 opportunities. This is He easily. hit the mark in four of ten games last year. 19 was his peak of any game last year. I'm going to die this one. This was, <laughs> <laughs> this was the most difficult one for me. You know, you look at how they started the season last year. You say, oh, he hit that mark in four games. Well, three of the first four games he hit that mark. You've got the targets that will probably go up for him. And, you know, now it's like, well, there's no Daryl Williams, and we don't really know what's behind him between who's coming up, Isaiah Pacheco, Jarek McKinnon, Ronald Jones. It's probably going to be mostly Clyde. But I find that when I ride with Clyde, I die, so I'm yeah, dying. Yeah, that that has uh, kind of been the case for him. But I think that the – I think the Chiefs will – win this game so if we're talking just 14 carries here for Clyde plus three targets I'm going to ride all right Mike you are in on Clyde that was ride or die presented by Chevy Silverado learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com news and notes from around the league presented by USAA insurance All right, Bills have signed tight end Dawson Knox to a four-year contract extension, close friend of Josh Allen, and now, I don't know, maybe they can share a bank. So uh, Adam Schefter reporting this. <laughs> I don't think Knox can get into Josh Allen's bank. He is a bank into himself. Yes, yeah, um, for, for Knox. No, 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 we, oh. we got the joke. Oh, Mike didn't, so no, never no, no, mind. I got, no, no, I got that, but I just was thinking, you know, Josh Allen has actual crazy money. Uh, the deal is expected to make him a top five highest paid tight end in the league. I said this before the show. We have spent an off season propping up the hopes and dreams of starting with Jamison Crowder, then that transition to Isaiah McKenzie, and we ended the year with Gabe Davis hype through the moon. We like James Cook. He might get some more targets. The words said about Dawson Knox this off season have been, uh, you could, I mean, it's been nothing. We, it started off a little bit hotter. And then cooled, I think, because... I missed probably, the hot period. <laughs> it, 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 was there a part... It, it was. It, time where people were like, hey, Dawson Knox is going to step up? Uh, there there was a time at, like when the season had closed out. I remember being a little bit more hot and bothered, but the way that there's... The way that the offense has always functioned, it would take such a... It would take a pretty big change for the way that Josh Allen plays football and targets Dawson Knox. He's He is an important part of the Buffalo Bills offense, and he could become like a truly important piece of it, but he's he's more of a like a, a high touchdown upside player on an offense w with with a lot of touchdowns to go around. There is at least a percentage chance he's taking the Mark Andrews path to greatness at there's the tight a, end position. There's a chance he has the athleticism, yes. and the downfield catching ability that you know certain tight ends don't have that in their repertoire. So he could do it. I'm not saying he will do it. He could, though. Yeah. And maybe it was the O.J. Howard existence, um, you know, shadowing that situation. Part of it. All right. The Jets are starting Joe Flacco on Sunday against the Ravens. Another third re revenge game narrative, right? Russ is playing his former team. Baker is former team. Joe Flacco starting against the Ravens uh, makes me feel less confident starting the Ravens D than I would if Zach Wilson was making a surprise appearance. Okay. 
because the Ravens D struggled a lot last year and on paper it looks amazing and I've taken them a lot of places. So I was kind of hoping Zach Wilson showed up. Yeah, the the secondary for the Ravens got so injured going deep into last year that they went from being a great defense to a terrible defense, one that you were targeting. Starting off this year, I still like the Ravens. I mean, yes, Joe Flacco might be better for the passing game than Zach Wilson right now, but he's not great. You know, I'm not I'm not uh, shying away from my Ravens because Joe Flacco is there. I will say it is a road game. I am slightly. Uh, I am I'm slightly higher now on someone like Elijah Moore because I I mean you saw Garrett Wilson talk about this when Joe Flacco came in and said well, he throws a more wide receiver friendly ball yeah. which is just to say he throws a better football I'm a wide receiver like I like to catch um what's the game line there do we have a, a new one it's Baltimore. minus minus seven minus on the road right. was that game waiting for the quarterback announcement probably not <laughs> <laughs> all right all right fair enough yeah start your ravens defense matt lafleur says he's hopeful hopeful rookie wide receiver christian watson will play on sunday for the packers and uh, he was non-committal with wide receiver uh also known as mike's my guy alan lazard who was sidelined last week for undisclosed reasons so we do not Being have a too awesome uh look can't be awesome if you're off the field, Mike. I just it was it was not disclosed, so I can fill in the blank like a Mad Libs. Yeah. Uh. Well, Jason, would you like to fill in the blank differently? Uh. I think that the latest we heard is that they were expecting him to be able to go. I mean, it, he he didn't practice Monday, but I think Lazard does play. But he's probably the wrong lizard there because yeah, this is week we, we one. know we know and week one is sammy Watkins' time so i think the lizard king shines and throws everybody off the lizard scent it, i like how the graphic changed from him in a jersey for the team he played for mm -hmm. into now just an ambiguous lizard jersey we can't keep up because he's just moving around so much we, we have to invest too much into the graphics team for that ESPN's Jordan uh, Rainin reporting Giants wide receiver Sterling Shepard coming off the Achilles. He plans to play week one against the Titans. Oh, man. It, look, if anything, for this, uh, for this upcoming, upcoming football season, we get to put the Achilles injuries to the test because now we got the wideout. We got multiple running backs coming back with Robinson and Akers. It's, and O.J. Howard. And O.J. – well, O.J. Howard, I mean, that was a while back when his happened. Sure, but, but the timeline. For him to actually come back and do something. Yeah, so, that, like, that's an interesting storyline. That Can these players actually come back? I am still going to bet against them. Speaking of one that did come back from it but wasn't the same, yep. Emmanuel Sanders announced his retirement. Uh, so he is no longer going to be playing football. He came back off of the Achilles injury that he suffered in Denver, I believe. Yeah, right. and he he wasn't the same player after that time, and it's something that is a concern. Um, was talking to uh, a doctor out of the Baylor College of Orthopedics, Tucker Cushing, who just explained, you will never get back to a hundred percent strength on the on the side of. Uh, where you suffer the Achilles injury. It's not something that, and, and it was interesting to me because you think of it as, okay, maybe another year goes by or another year goes by. And Devon, you know, we had uh, Deontay Foreman mm -hmm. recover and maybe he's a hundred percent now or Cam Akers. He's going to be a hundred percent next year. Even if he's not a hundred percent now, that's not the reality from a medical perspective on Achilles injuries. You will never have that level of strength back again. And that's why we've never seen somebody come back to, you know, these, these are elite athletes playing against elite athletes at the highest point in, you know, the entire Humanity. country. Yeah. So like a small, tiny mm -hmm. difference in what you were takes you out of that category or has the potential to. You just think about how <clears throat> players age. You know, it's like there, there's these age cliffs where uh, yeah, a, one player, year. a player was great one year and he loses 10%. And he's just not even good the, the next season. It's not like he forgot how to play football. It's you need to you need to be at the top of your game in the NFL. I know. I was watching uh, practice footage of A.J. Green after I recklessly tweeted he may 
just plain be super involved in week one because we forget he's even there. Yes. And everybody's By hurt. Choice. And everybody's gone. And here's A.J. Green, the starting outside wide receiver in that game, the only one with familiarity with Kyler. Gross. But anyways, I watched practice footage of him. And in practice, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that is a superstar athlete making these cuts. I, I, legitimately. Right, right, right. And it's like you know that he's now slow <laughs> at the NFL level and yet looks better than everybody else. Isaiah McKenzie listed as a full participant, Jason. So you – We're back, baby. <laughs> you will get your captain. Yeah, it's not good enough for him to play. He needs to play well. <laughs> okay. Um, should be ready to go, though, for tomorrow night. Cliff Kingsbury said Zacherts will be day-to-day -day for week one. Um. Yeah, I mean, isn't he already day-to-day -day for week one? I mean, we have not seen him out there practicing. Van Jefferson not ready to go yet. It's yeah. going to be Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson show on Thursday Night yeah. Football. If uh, if the platforms, we could just, you know, let's just wrap that up and mark him out. You know, the game is tomorrow. <laughs> you know, no reasons. Right, sure. Uh, all right, I think that's it for news. Yep. Anything else going on? You going to put some uh, Joe Flacco prop bets in there, Brooksy? You big on the Flacco train? Nah, I don't think so. Uh, I was hoping to get an all, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was hoping to get an all, yeah, for that. <laughs> that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break, and then we're back with the Thursday night preview. Well, gentlemen, we have uh, we have spent every minute from the February time period after the Super Bowl yep. until now waiting for football to return, waiting for fantasy football to return. All of the brutal upsets that are about to happen for both fantasy players and in the NFL, I cannot wait. It's time to preview the first game of the 2022 NFL season. <laughs> Thursday Night Breakdown. I'm so excited. I am. I, I mean, I'm so excited. Not just to talk about this game, but the this game. I Like, I couldn't have picked a better matchup. This was uh, a week ago, my Super Bowl pick, and I think a lot of people's Super Bowl pick. And we get to see it week one. Two great offenses, two great defenses. Let's go. Yeah, we could see it week one, and we could see it the last week of the year. It's potentially uh, in the cards. Buffalo at Los Angeles taking on the Rams. Buffalo, two-and-a-half-point road favorites. Oh, the disrespect. That feels disrespectful. It does. <laughs> yeah, it is disrespectful. They just won a Super Bowl. Yeah, and uh, the total for this game, 51-and-a-half points. It's amazing. Now, Sean McVay has a great track record opening the season 5-0 and in week one games, scoring almost 33 points a game in those games. That's, and McVay has only coached five years. Yeah, and home teams. That's crazy. In general, are 11-4-4 four four against the spread in Thursday night football openers. 16-3 and three straight up, and here we are with Buffalo, two-and-a-half point favorites on the road against Los Angeles. It's a trap. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Buffalo's defense only allowed 4.6 yards per play last year, the only NFL team under five. So, obviously, you're going to have to try to slow down the Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford stack. We'll get to see Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson, the usage, and maybe more importantly, how Cam Akers actually looks on the field, but it will be against a tough defense. So I can already hear the excuses flowing for any fantasy player if Cam Akers struggles. It's wait till he gets a good matchup. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the storylines in this game, the players on fantasy teams that you'll be watching, I've got a pair. I've got the Devin Singletary, Allen Robinson situation going in my in league of record team. But let's start at the quarterback position. Josh Allen, Matthew Stafford. How are you viewing them for fantasy purposes this week? Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you drafted Josh Allen, it doesn't matter who he's playing. He's in. He's the best quarterback for fantasy in the league. Uh, I think he has a phenomenal first outing. This is also interesting because you've seen Josh Allen and some of these bills a little bit in the preseason, whereas McVay doesn't play his guys. So we get kind of the first taste of the Rams. And Matthew Stafford, the big question all offseason has been the elbow. How is the elbow? Um, is he going to be limited? And Sean McVay has been adamant. There will be no limitations. This was all part of the plan to 
basically allow him to just play the same way that he we has limited been playing. so he won't have limitations <laughs> exactly right uh i don't love the idea of starting matthew stafford in this first game i think there are more quarterbacks that i prefer he's outside of my top 12 so you know that that being said you know if this is one of those situations where you've got a, a very close call between a couple of players it is really hard to not. I mean, if we're talking <laughs> yes, redraft home leagues, yeah. the, not necessarily you know some DFS money on the line thing. Uh, it's hard to not play someone in in the NFL kickoff. Yeah, because really, if we just you know we just got out of the draft. If you drafted Matthew Stafford to be your starting quarterback, the question really is, do you play him against Buffalo or do you drop him to pick up somebody like Derek Carr against the Chargers or Kirk Cousins? against Green Bay or, you know, those are the kind of the two names that jump out to me as possibilities, or do you just ride? I think you just ride. Kirk Cousins would be interesting sure. uh, against Green Bay, but, I mean, if you drafted that's the, if you drafted Stafford to be your guy, you hopefully knew week one that he was playing against the Buffalo Bills. Which Buffalo gave up the fewest points to uh, fantasy quarterbacks yeah. in all of last year, so it is a tough one. Josh Allen on the road last year, 295 passing, 49 rushing average. Okay. Yeah, you're going to play him. Yep. Uh, we're going to also see a little bit more about the Buffalo backfield. Devin Singletary, I want to take you back in time because I think it got lost maybe with the draft pick of James Cook, but he ended the season uh, absolutely on fire. Uh, 12, 16, 16, 23, 24 fantasy points to round out the year. And seems like the guy in Buffalo. Yeah, that that's the way that he has been used in the preseason. Um, I think that the the draft pick of James Cook and and along with the other stuff of they wanted Chase Edmonds, they didn't get him. They wanted JD McKissick, they didn't get him. So they went and they got James Cook in the second round, which is a very high draft pick for a running back. And the fact that Zach Moss still made the roster, and then there was like this resurgence of of Zach Moss coming out of the beat reporters for Buffalo saying no they're they're not going to get rid of him he is in fact going to be part of their game plan I think that's why you're so hesitant about Devin Singletary who's like he's a he's a good running back and if he is truly the guy then he can put up monster numbers like he did at the end of the year because that that was the situation here against the Rams though that's that's not the best uh that's not the best opening game for him I think what I was encouraged about by the finish of the year is that none of it really came in the passing game. So there wasn't, you know, they're, they're looking to fill sure. that role with J.D. McKissick. Now, you don't go sign J.D. McKissick to solve your running back room. You go do it to solve third down. Um, so, you know, like you said, the matchup, it's challenging. Let's put it heads up right here. You like Cam Akers in week one at home against the Buffalo defense or Devin Singletary week one against oh, the Rams? Man. Jason? That That's an easy Singletary for me. I'm going to bet on the fire we saw at the end of last year and how he was utilized in the preseason. I want to take a wait-and-see approach if I have Cam Akers, which I, I don't really have anywhere. I mean, it will be very telling against a good Buffalo run defense. If Cam Akers comes out and makes me eat crow and looks awesome week one, then you have a steal in the draft. If I, I can't imagine he looks great against Buffalo and then gets worse. So, uh, but heads up to me, I would rather play Devin Singletary. Um, okay. What about a Stephon Diggs Cooper Cup? We don't need to remind you how good they are. You're playing them. Yep. But what about a battle of the wide receiver twos on these teams? Gabriel Davis uh, had the monster performance in the playoffs, and then Allen Robinson. Got the big money deal, and the reports in camp have been so strong. If you're staring down the decision uh, between those two players, where do you go in week one? Between them, I go Allen Robinson. Uh, you drafted him higher, uh, you know, and I, I think that you, you've got enough time here to really game plan for Cooper Cup, but you're starting both of these guys. Like, both need to be in your lineups. These are two teams from last year that are extremely up tempo. Uh, Buffalo was second neutral pace. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Tembo. Tembo. Up tempo. Uh, and, and the Rams were. That's like a, that's like a, uh, a superhero. Up tempo? No, Tembo. Sounds like a really strong man. Sounds like uh, Kimbo. Kimbo Slice. Maybe that's fighter. what it reminded me of. There it is. Uh, but And Rambo. The Rams were tied for fifth in neutral pace. Buffalo second. And these are two teams 
that throw the ball all over the place. Uh, top three in passing attempts inside the 10. Both quarterbacks were top five in red zone touching, touchdown passes. So, yeah, I honestly, I would rather sit Devin Singletary and Cam Akers. I'm not yes. trying to get Singletary in my lineup. If I have to pick one, I pick Singletary. I am trying to get Gabriel Davis and Allen Robinson uh, and, and even – Isaiah McKenzie, I'm not, I'm not pushing him into the lineup, but I think he's a fine flex play. I am, I'm, I'm nervous about the dependency on McKenzie in Week One. He's like Cam Akers. I'd love to to wait and see because I do think Jameson Crowder's on the field. Like I, I think he's going sure. to take have snaps, especially if McKenzie's been battling to get back on the field. Makes me a little nervous. Dawson Knox, a much better play than Tyler Higby on the other side. Um, Dawson Knox lasted very long in drafts, sometimes undrafted as well. But uh, an opportunity there. Last year, the Rams defense, middle of the pack against tight ends. Yeah, the, really the only way that the Rams were exploited last year was the wide receiver position. So the, for me, the heads up of Gabe Davis, Allen Robinson, I got the edge to Gabe. Okay, any other storylines from this game? Van Jefferson not ready to get back out there yet. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about? Mm, I can't for, wait. No. I can't wait to yep. watch it. Yes. Um. Hope everything goes perfect for my fantasy teams and none of your guys'. Well, yeah. thanks, bud. Yeah. yeah. Thank got you. you. Mailbag. Mailbag. <laughs> All right, I like oh, it. Yeah. All right, if you have a question for the show, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button or dial the voicemail hotline three zero two four six four TFFB. Now we got a little cheating at the top of the mailbag. Because Brooks and Phoenix tossed his own question in there first. Oh, cheater, cheater. And uh, I, if I didn't know any better, I would think that that is the very same Judge Giamatti. If I, that's just my guess. Um, who are your Super Bowl picks? I've got the Thursday night game. So it's very simple. I have Buffalo defeating the Rams who return to the Super Ooh, Bowl. So it's the first and the last. Who do you have winning tomorrow's game? I also have Buffalo. Okay. Yeah, I have the money line on Buffalo. All right, Jay, who I, you got? I do as well, and I also have Buffalo winning the Super Bowl this year. I think they're the best roster top to bottom, but I have them winning over the Packers, who I think have quite an easy-ish path to the, uh, to the Super Bowl. The NFC, much easier. Their division, much easier than the Rams. I think that uh, they'll go in as the number one seed. Not an easy path for my pick because I am taking the Denver Broncos to win the Super Bowl. That defense finally paired to not just a competent offense that I'm projecting, but an actual top-notch offense. I think that takes them to Super Bowl victory. And I'm going with the Saints sure. as the, the team that the Broncos will defeat. They are – we kind of mentioned this a week or two ago. They're just – they are sneaky, sneaky good. They're great on the defensive side of the football. And Jameis Winston, before the ACL tour, was playing incredibly efficient and good football. And now he's paired with an actual an, an actual room of starting NFL wide receivers compared to what he had last year. So, out of curiosity, Mike, because of the divisions that both the Broncos and Saints are in, Tampa Bay to deal right. with, and then the Broncos obviously dealing with the Chiefs and uh, the playoff-bound Raiders and the Chargers. Do you have both of those teams winning their respective divisions or taking the wild card route to the playoffs? I have the Broncos winning their division, and I have a uh, a very sharp football mind uh, that I listened to just over the weekend. He was talking about that Tom Brady's going to fall off this year. Oh, okay. Mm. Wow, bold. So, what a bold uh, prediction. But no, I, I will still take the Bucks to win that division, and the Saints will take the hard path. Okay. All right. Uh Jumping into the mailbag here, we're going to be dealing with some week one questions for the first time. There are a lot of questions that were submitted regarding Michael Thomas. Oh, man. Can I Next trust question. Michael Thomas in week one? Should I start Michael Thomas in week one? Those types of questions. So let's start there. Um, so, can you? <laughs> yes, you can do whatever you want. I... <laughs> nice. Uh, that would nice be the best answer. answer for the entire mailbag. Yeah, man, look, you, you just do what you want to do. Yeah. No, I'm I'm preferring to not start Michael Thomas in week one. He obviously got back from the two-year-long ankle injury and was looking finally good in camp. But then he had the hamstring injury, and we have not seen him recovered 
since that point. We haven't seen game uh, film or anything of real football since his second injury here. I want to see that first. I, I think that, you know, I'm not starting Isaiah McKenzie over Michael Thomas, but common names that people will be wondering. Juju Smith-Schuster against Arizona. Amon Ross St. Brown, the what is he going to be? Like, right. I'm, I'm going with those caliber of players over Michael Thomas in week one, hoping that Michael Thomas is awesome and destroys and looks great and you had a great pick. But I... I'm not going to hold my breath waiting for that because I think I'll die. The the total for the Saints Falcons, I mean, it's, we're, we're 42, looking at right? 42 points. However, you know, the the Saints are implied to be at 24 points, which I mean, you you can that's not the worst. Uh, and I think that there is a chance that the, the Falcons they like I mean they lose this game, but they make it a little bit more competitive. They're at home and they've got. Uh, Drake London's back and healthy, so they actually have an offense this year compared to last year. And uh, I think Michael Thomas, where you drafted him, he's got a rough you're... matchup this week, right, Kyle? Yeah, AJ Terrell's a yeah. big deal. Okay, number well, one me... cornerback according to Pro Football Focus. Let me ask you this because okay. um, this is a question my son actually has in our family league. He drafted both Michael Thomas and Chris Olave. Oh, I'd, I'd play Thomas. Really, I would play. Fan, I'd play Olave because a fantasy mind that um, I have listened oh, I, yes. to before yes. said that Olave was the wide receiver one by the end of the year. Okay, so not while Thomas is nursing his hamstring, but later when he gets back, he was present at the walkthrough. All right, I will. I, will I will play take Olave. Olave. Yeah, I, same. My Kate Olave, obviously. <laughs> um, week one start decision. Uh, if you were doing the Michael Thomas uh, dance, Michael Thomas or Juju against Arizona? Juju. Juju. Michael Thomas or Mooney against San Francisco? I'd, I'd play Mooney. Mooney. Amon Ross, St. Brown against Philly? Amon Ross. Yep. Elijah Moore against oh, Baltimore? Oh, Elijah Moore. Adam Thielen against Green Bay? Yeah, every, everyone, is, we're starting them all against Michael Thomas. Oh, Amari, Amari Cooper at Carolina. Oh, well, there hey, we go. Michael Thomas. Yeah. I'll yeah. take Amari Cooper. I Dude, Amari, Amari Cooper. Speak, like you, The way you were talking about Dawson Knox, of, we haven't really talked about him. Amari Cooper, I just have... I have no idea. I, f I feel just nothingness, absolute nothingness for Amari Cooper this year. <laughs> I just don't. Just a neutrality? I just just a, yeah. Just a pure You're like, is it going to be good? Apathy? Eh. Is it going to be bad? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just don't care. <laughs> okay. Follow-up question on Amari Cooper, Mike. <laughs> right. Ask Redraft ask and dynasty value. I just don't care. Uh, is Amari Cooper underrated? Jason, do you think he's underrated? Right now? I do not. I, I think that the wide receiver one for Jacoby Brissett teams, we've got a lot of data on it. They're not usually well, this is all, dino. That, all that valuable. This is Dino. Oh. So you're talking next year, Cooper, theoretically on the Browns, theoretically Deshaun Watson. Yeah, I, I actually do think he is undervalued in, in Dynasty because at the very end of this year, he's going to become the one for Deshaun Watson. He will enter next year as the one I thought, for Deshaun Watson. I thought part of the negative – uh, messaging that I've heard about Amari Cooper was related to being on the backside of a productive career and and, yeah. and declining. I, you think that in think, a dynasty league, then a year removed from now, that you still feel confident in? Yeah, him? to to be valuable is just a matter of twenty nine of how they're being valued. And right now, Amari Cooper, even in dynasty leagues, I feel like is pretty much left for dead. Nobody wants Amari Cooper, and I think he will. He will be worth more than what he costs to get. You don't have to give up much. I think he'll be fine in redraft. Would you say you just don't care? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to take a, 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 a view on it. You know, it's like there are a lot of teams with struggles at the quarterback position, but he is so far and away the number one on that team. Like the talent level between Amari Cooper and the rest of the wide receivers that they have, it's vast. Like he should be able to absorb targets. You know, we talk about players like Christian Kirk, with Trevor Lawrence being a disaster last year and having all this confidence in Christian Kirk coming in, the Browns went out and acquired Amari Cooper, and I understand it's not Deshaun Watson, but he may surprise you. I mean, there was a time when um, Terrell Pryor <laughs> was a relevant fantasy wide receiver in a Browns offense that was run heavy that had no quarterback. So yeah. I just can't help but think Amari Cooper is better than that Terrell Pryor. And in Dynasty, you know, he's 28 right now. But next year, fifteen million dollar dead cap. The next year after that, eleven million dollar dead cap. He has a long term contract in place right now. 
All right, uh, we are going to look at this one. YouTube question from Keith says, am I wrong to want Julio over Rondale as a bench wide receiver flyer? I don't, I don't think you're wrong. No. I don't think that I don't think that's wrong. They're both I mean, they go right around the same area of the draft and they're I mean, you can see the path for both of them. You have as long as Tom Brady is still good, you have a top tier quarterback. Kyler is a top tier quarterback for fantasy purposes. It's it comes down to what is your belief in Chris Godwin, which the update on Chris Godwin, if you hadn't seen, he was practicing without a, a, a knee brace, but the and his quote, I believe, if is he going to play week one? And he says it comes down to feel. It comes down to does Chris Godwin feel like he's ready to play? So that's still up in the air. And if like if Chris Godwin is out, then Julio Jones is is I would play him week one. Generically speaking, I am always going to take a second year, second round draft pick wide receiver over a thirty eight hundred right. year old wide receiver, but. Who's it's, going to go right into the Hall of Fame? Right, but it, the the reality is Rondell Moore probably won't play Week One, and Julio uh, should be at his most valuable, the least injured, and the most injured team around him in Week One. So if you want to take a shot with Julio right off the bat in your drafts, if you still got a draft to go, I don't I don't blame you at all. The only yeah, I, I can be completely wrong about this, so you'd want to look it up, but. Chris Godwin, the videos that I saw of him with no brace in practice, no pads, running around with the team gingerly, you know, no, nothing that sure. was intense. He may have later got into that, but what I saw didn't give me the, like, he's oh, he's definitely playing in week one, and Russell Gage we know will be back as well. So uh, very tentative there situation-wise. Um, question from ZTC. Could DJ Chark be good this year? Yeah. He yes. could, uh, you know the the reminder of he played essentially three games was a top twenty four wide wide receiver in two of them, and he until you know until William Williams is ready to go, it's Amon Ra and DJ Chark as as the starting wide receivers. Yeah, I know Hawkinson is there, but I mean, I, I, I Hawkinson is just he's had so many opportunities to really break out and. and hasn't become the player that the Lions thought he would. And the Lions will be trailing in games, and DJ Chark is still big and he's still fast. And and Jared and, Goff is Goff, not yes. he is not a bad quarterback. He, he's not, you know, the the franchise. He's not Matthew Stafford. Yeah, he's not he's not Matthew Stafford. But he supported uh, a good Cooper Cup, a good Robert Woods. I, I think if DJ Moore or if DJ Chark is you know, he's looked good through preseason through camp. Uh, yeah, he could get off to a to a fine start. I mean, Josh Reynolds had relevance at times with sure. the Lions because of Jared Goff. I can't help but compare him to the Blake Bortles type of situation. If you're willing to throw the ball a ton, Jacksonville, Blake Bortles, um, Goff is going. They're going to be down. They're going to be cha at, le at least competing in the passing game. There is a shot at it. Um, definitely an undrafted player in most leagues, but could be somebody that has a big week one. All of a sudden, people are running to the waiver wire. All right. Uh, YouTube question from Brendan: Start Rashad Bateman or Damian Pierce in a half PPR league <laughs> in Week One? Rashad Bateman <laughs> against the Jets, Damian Pierce against Indianapolis. Ooh, I will be going Rashad Bateman. I think Rashad Bateman is criminally undervalued in drafts right now. He's the clear wide receiver one for the Ravens, who. They are a run-heavy team, but they don't have running backs just like last year to start the season. Um, and the the Jets are not a scary defense. I'd probably take, depending on my roster, I'd probably take the guaranteed points of Damian Pierce in week one, just knowing that he's going to get the ball 10, 15 times minimum as the starting running back. I will probably go that route against Indianapolis and let let my eyeballs watch what this offense looks like without Hollywood Brown. In Baltimore, Eileen Bateman, but that's I mean that's a compelling argument for just knowing that Pierce is going to get some points. I don't I don't love the matchup, and I do love the matchup for Rashad Bateman. If I was a heavy underdog, I'd probably go the Bateman route and just hope I end up with a couple touchdowns in a great matchup where they're apparently favored by what two hundred on the road. Uh, Chase yep. Edmonds or Elijah Moore in a non PPR. Oh, non PPR, interesting. Uh. Who do, 
What's, the, what's Edmonds, the Dolphins line at? In a non-PPR, uh, you can look up the line, Kyle. The, in a non-PPR, you're really going to win the matchup with a touchdown. Uh, I know that the Dolphins are playing the Patriots yes. week one, but if I had to if I had to make a bet on which player gets a touchdown, I think it would be Chase Edmonds. I really like Elijah Moore this week. So is that who you'd go with? Yeah. So I got to split the difference here? Yep. I'm probably going to go with the guaranteed points here <laughs> of Chase Edmonds, the are running they, back. But are they guaranteed? They're guaranteed. Yeah, the touches, if I had to bet on 10, you know, 10, 15 opportunities. Chase is going to get that no matter what. Elijah Moore, it's like, it's 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 amazing how we've been spun into the circle of Zach Wilson because when Joe Flacco plays quarterback, we also run to the waiver wire for that defense because we've seen him go out and step into games and throw five interceptions and make mistakes. So the thought process that Flacco is going to go out there and be better than he's been before it's not guaranteed. Yeah, I will say it. Even if if this were Zach Wilson starting, I mean, I guess the injury part is a little concerning. But if this were a healthy Zach Wilson in this matchup against the Ravens, it would still be Elijah Moore for me. There, you know, the Ravens, you, perhaps they are back on the defensive side of the football, but what we have to go off of were last year's numbers, and they were absolutely atrocious. But the Ravens, I would project to have a solid lead here and a lot of catch up for Elijah Moore. All right, last one here. AJ, DJ. AJ Dillon or DJ Moore in week one? Instagram question from Jonathan. Dillon plays at Minnesota or DJ Moore against Cleveland at home? Uh, it's DJ Moore. I mean, AJ Dillon, we expect to be a little bit more involved, but when you're grabbing him, you're grabbing him as a flex style regular player, hoping <clears throat> that you get the true breakout year or in, if an injury happens later to Aaron Jones that. Dylan will be unstoppable, whereas DJ Moore, you drafted him to be probably your wide receiver, too. I, if I'm picking these guys' heads up, it's definitely DJ for me. Mike? DJ Moore. I'm going to go with the guaranteed points <laughs> of A.J. Dillon in week one uh, against Minnesota, but it's a close one, and if I needed ceiling, it would definitely be DJ Moore. All right, tomorrow's episode of the show has never not working. The beginning of the matchups for the weekend – Starts of the week as well. You don't want to miss it. And if you want to be part of our listener community, that is um, it's just a fun place to spend your fantasy season. Uh, we have a free Discord that you can go and join. You can see that by going to thefantasyfootballers.com and clicking the little Discord icon in the upper right corner. Join that. Uh, it is uh, 20,000 plus fantasy football fanatics that – you know, love to help everything from trade evaluations to start sit decisions, which we have the start sit tool on our website as well. If you want to see our opinion on your start sit decision, um, you can find league mates. You can you can have a lot of fun with the community that is over there. And if you want to play with us in our listener league, but you're like, I don't know how to get into the listener league. I don't have a great submission that's going to wow these guys. Just win the Megala Bowl, and you're in next year. You've got a couple hours left to get in the Megala Bowl. And when you join us and support us at jointhefoot.com, that's going to give you all sorts of tools for the season, premium projections, the career snapshot tool, our flex rankings. There's everything to get you through this season. Because you Stream don't, Finder. The Stream Finder is wonderful. You don't win your championship at the draft. You set the foundation, and now we go week by week the re through the season, and we bring home hashtag Footland titles together. And you didn't even mention an extra episode of this show every single week. So check that out at jointhefoot.com. Until tomorrow, which will be football time, have a good day. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.